Hello. Hola. My name is Emma. Me llamo Emma. And in today's video, we are going to look at 10 common mistakes Spanish speakers make. Now, if you are not a Spanish speaker, don't worry. You can still watch this video because some of these mistakes you might be making as well. Okay, so there are 10 common mistakes, especially for Spanish speakers. Now, before I get started, some of our Spanish audience has asked questions. Emma, can you speak Spanish? The answer is, yo hablo uno poco, a little. I think it's, it's that. I'm learning Spanish, but my Spanish is not perfect. So if I mispronounce any words in this video, any Spanish words, I'm sorry, I apologize now. So let's get started. So we have 10 in total. All right, let's look at number one. A common mistake I see my Spanish students make is they often forget the subject of the sentence. So they often forget it at the beginning or I at the beginning. Um, for example, um, in Spanish, I think you can say, soy canadiense. I'm Canadian. In English, you can't do this. You always need the subject. So make sure you don't make this mistake. Remember, you need either it, I, he, she, we, they, um, you. You always need a subject. Problem number two I see is the pronunciation of E and the I sound, especially when it comes to this and these. When I hear my Spanish speakers, or my Spanish students, sorry, when I hear them use this, sometimes it sounds like these to me. I hear these, these. They don't always pronounce the difference. So this is a, a common mistake. It's very important to practice the I sound versus the E sound. How do we do this? With E, you smile. These. You see the big smile? These. With the I, you don't really smile. This. You have a serious face. This. This. And these. I want you to practice saying this and these. You see how different my mouth looks when I say this and these? Okay. Now, this is very important, not just for this and these, but many words in English, um, students mistake the E sound and the uh sound. What are some other examples? Well, this is a bad example, but shit and sheet, okay? Shit is um, merda, mierta. Um, sheet, I, I don't know what it is, um, but it's, a, it's like a piece of paper or a bed sheet. So notice you have two E's, it's an E, sheet. This one, shit. Okay, so serious, shit. Um, it's very important. Um, also, there are many bad words in English, and they usually have the, the i sound. Shit, another bad word. Um, and I'm only saying these words to teach you not to make this mistake. Another bad word, bitch, versus beach, beach. You see? It's very important to be able to pronounce the difference between e, smile, and i. No smile, okay? Number three, false friends. What's a false friend? When we talk about false friends, we talk about, we're, we're talking about words in both Spanish and English that look the same when you read them. Maybe they even sound the same, but they have totally different meanings, okay? This is a big problem. Um, also for me learning Spanish. This is a big problem for me too. An example, libraria. And I know my R pronunciation, um, the R, can't do it. Libraria, no, libraria. It does not mean library, okay? They look the same. Libraria is a bookstore. Library is a place you go to borrow books. So this is one, Example of a false friend. Another example, aprobar. 
A lot of people see the word approve and they think, oh, they, they look the same, they mean the same thing. They don't. Approbar in English means to pass, like to pass an exam. Okay? There are many of these. Um, when I first started learning Spanish, I think the one I had the most difficulty with was embarazada and embarrassed. Embarrassed means um, you feel uncomfortable, you feel awkward. Embarazada means you're pregnant. So it's a very, very common mistake English speakers make when they're learning Spanish. So keep an eye out for false friends. Okay, number four. This is a pronunciation problem when we're talking about numbers. Okay, you might hear 13, 30, 14, 40, 15, 50. They sound very similar, don't they? And maybe when you say these numbers, people write down the wrong number. So how do we correct this? If you want to say 13, the best thing to do is say thir, quiet. So the first part, thir. Teen. Teen should be loud and it should be long. So let's say it together. Thir, teen. Okay? Whereas if I'm saying 30, 30, you'll notice thir is loud and long. And the last part, T or D, is quiet. So 13, 30. Okay? You can use the same trick for 14 and 40, uh, 15 and 50, 16 and 60. Okay? Very important trick. Number five. I think this is one of the ones a lot of uh, students have trouble with. In Spanish, you have this verb, hacer, I think. In English, it has two meanings. It can be to make something or to do something. All right. So what often happens is Spanish students use make when they should use do, or they use do when they should use make. The best thing is when you learn a new um, word with um, make or do, you should memorize it. If you visit our website at www.ingvid.com, we have a great resource for looking at make and do. So come visit us. You can see the difference. Um, you know, there, there's a really good list. Practice that list. Okay, so now let's look at five more common mistakes Spanish speakers make. Number six, soup. Okay. In Spanish, you use su. In English, we use him or her. The problem is because in English we have two, him for boys, her for girls. In Spanish, you have one. Many times Spanish speakers mix up him and her. When they're talking about girls, sometimes they'll say him. When they're talking about boys, sometimes they'll say her. So it's very important to know him is for boys and her is for girls. Because, for example, maybe you like someone and if you say, I like him, when you mean I like her, that might be confusing. Or you might like someone else and say, I like her, but you want to say, I like him. Okay, so careful with this one. Number seven, adjectives. So to remind you, an adjective is a word that describes another word, okay? The problem Spanish speakers often have when they're learning English is the order. For example, in English, here is the noun, house. The adjective comes before the noun. I like the big house. In Spanish, it's the opposite. Big comes, oh, sorry, this is the adjective. The noun comes first, and then the adjective. Okay, um, I hope the sentence is correct. Uh, me gusta la casa grande. Uh, let me know if I made a mistake here. But again, many Spanish speakers make a mistake with 
the order. They might want to say, I have, or my blue eyes are beautiful. Maybe they say, my eyes blue are beautiful. Another common problem with adjectives, um, not just for Spanish speakers, but many students make this, is in English we have a very special order where if you have two or three adjectives before a noun, um, they have to go in an, a special order. Um, in Spanish, I don't know if you have this, I don't think so. So what you can do is to learn about this, again, check out our website. We have some great videos about the order of adjectives. And um, there's tests on it too on our website, so you can practice that. Number eight, my, his, her, when we're talking about body parts. I've heard many sp Spanish speakers say, I brush the hair. I wash the face. I break the arm. In English, you need to use, if you're talking about your hair, I brush my hair. He brushes his hair. She brushes her hair. Okay? You can't just use the. Same with, um, you know, I broke, what should this be? My arm. She broke her arm. He broke his arm. So when you're talking about body parts, you can't use that in English um, for these examples. When you're doing something to yourself, you need to use my, his, her. Number nine. Sometimes my students say, I am agree. I think it's because it's the exact um, sentence in Spanish, I am agree. In English, we don't need the M. You can just say, I agree. Number 10, contractions. I'll versus I will. I don't, I don't, I'm, I. Many times um, Spanish speakers, they have difficulty saying contractions, such as I'll. I often hear my students say, I will, I will, I will. But oftentimes in English we say I'll. Okay, so you need to practice saying I'll. I'll go to the market today. I'll go shopping today. Um, practice that. You don't always have to say I will. Same with um, I don't. I don't like coffee. Sometimes I hear Spanish students not pronounce the T. They say, I don't like coffee, okay? Um, they don't pronounce the T. You need to pronounce the T. I don't. So let's do that. Oh, sorry. T -t -t. Can you say that? T -t -t. I don't. Good. Um, another mistake I commonly see, uh, when students want to say, like, I'm angry. I'm hungry, I'm tired. They don't pronounce the M. They say, I hungry, I tired, I, I scared. But you really need to pronounce the M. Um, so let's practice. I'm, ma, I'm, I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm scared, okay? So we've just looked at 10 common mistakes Spanish speakers and other speakers make. What I would like to do now is invite you to take our quiz, to double check that you understood everything in this video, and to practice so you don't make these mistakes uh, in your conversations or writing. So come visit us at www.ingvid.com. There you can take our quiz, and you can check out some other resources, especially on adjective order. We have a great video on that. So until next time, take care.